So, this is the Q&A for one of my teenage and actually idols of today as well, I just remembered. <laughs> her name is Pamela Anderson. Give her a warm welcome. Personally, uh, what is it like being Pamela Anderson? Just a regular day. Like, do you eat breakfast like the rest of us yeah, Swedish I mean, mere mortals sitting well, at our I mean, IKEA kitchen tables? Well, I'm vegan. Oh, you're vegan. I'm vegan. Oh, very good. <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I'm going to go travel for eight months during the world, and I'm actually going to go vegan as well during these eight months. Oh, so, that's going to be interesting. Where are you yeah. going? Because different countries are it's easier and certain places. I can imagine. It should be easy here though. I mean, Sweden's a pretty progressive country, so For sure. I can't imagine you should probably get, um, yeah. I think we're quite trendy when it comes to being a vegetarian. Like, a lot of uh, the restaurants serve it and... There's always an option anyway. Anywhere you go, there's always an option. And yeah. every little bit helps. I always say yeah, I'm a naughty vegan. I do the best I can. Exactly. Sometimes <laughs> you know, just... Some people eat a little bit of cheese or a little bit of this. If you're not eating meat every day, I mean, you're doing the best. You're, you're helping the world. So. And French cheese, right? <laughs> just do your best. Yeah. So, like, you wake up in the morning. Do you have any routines? Like, what do you do when I've you wake up? I've been traveling so much lately. I don't even know where I am. I had to remind myself I'm in Stockholm. So, um, it depends. Oh, I feed my dog when I wake up. He's the first, you know, most important. And my kids are, I, I, my kids are grown, so it's not that they're not important. They just feed themselves. Um, Do you yeah, bring so your my dog, dog as well? And my dog is here, my dog, well, my dog's in Paris. But yeah, he came from LA. And yeah, he's with me. Zuzu, Zubi Zubi Zoo. Zubi Zuzu? Zubi Zubi Zoo, like the song. Zubi Zubi, oh yeah. Zubi Zubi Zoo, Zubi Zoo that song. Anyway, yeah, he's a, a golden retriever, and I usually rescue a lot of animals as well. But we lost a few last year, so when I moved to France, I took Zuzu. That's amazing. How old is he? He's two. Th uh, three. Three now. But it's nice when you have one dog that's really well trained, and then you get rescues. They train the rescues. So if you have one, you can have three, four, or five. And I usually, I, when I was in Malibu, I'd foster dogs and, and things like that. But that's amazing. Now I'm here with him. So that's, yeah, that, I usually, if I was in Malibu, I'd go to the beach and walking him on the beach. But, um, I was in Central Pay. He loves Central Pay. Everyone loves dogs in France. Oh, really? It's the best place to have a dog. I don't know how it, I'm sure it's good here, but you can bring him to restaurants. I, I brought him everywhere. That's he's very happy. And he's a big dog, so. And everyone loved him. Do you ever sneak any? Yeah, of course. Of course. But only vegan, right? Yeah, well, he's not vegan. No, he's no. not vegan. <laughs> no. No. Well, I cool. do have vegan treats and vegan things I slip into his diet, but he does get, um, he doesn't need, I don't worry about that with him. Oh, well, he's a dog, after all. Dogs can be vegan, though. Oh, they? Really? Cats can't. Cats can't. Cats, you have to feed them all sorts of supplements and everything. They're, they can't be vegan. No. That's something new. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, another one. How do you feel Baywatch, being back in the production of Baywatch for such a long time since you did anything close to it? Was well, it Baywatch was so much fun. I love the TV show better than the film. I haven't seen the film, the final film, yet. I'm, wait, I'm gonna wait to see it on a plane or something and see, but I, I can't imagine, I just, it, it was really funny doing the movie with Dwayne, you know, with The Rock, mm -hmm. and, um, and looking at him and calling him Mitch, just didn't it's bizarre. It's like, Mitch, you've gotten in shape, <laughs> you've changed. But anyway, so that was, it was good though, I just did a cameo, so I was only there for a couple days, but I'm in the film. That's cool, I like The Rock, he's like a big teddy bear, it feels he's like. He's so nice, yeah. he's so sweet. Yeah, it feels yeah. like it. He's kind of kooky. He's kind of like Hasselhoff. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I'm thinking, will we be seeing you any other projects like we will recognize in the near future or anything will be? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I've done a couple short films that have already come out. They're just more kind of art house films, getting my feet wet again. Now that my kids are grown, I'm um, seeing if I want to do it anymore. But I, I may do, I may go on tour again with Hans Klock, who's a magician. 
I loved being a magician's assistant. I love getting sawed in half and fire spikes going through really? me and levitated and handcuffed underwater. I love it. It's really dangerous. But I love it. I love magic. So I might do that around Germany. Do you know I'm a musician myself? You're a magician? Right? Yeah, look at this. Wow. I'm just going to grab the one right here. <coughs> oh, wow. Yes. Very nice. Very uh, good. Do you know you're a magic show? Yes, yes sir. And you saw me in half. A little bit. <laughs> Nothing big. <laughs> All right. I don't, uh, know, I, don't, I don't know what I want to do. I'm kind of semi retired. I'm renting my house out in Malibu and I'm semi homeless running around Europe causing trouble. Amazing. Yeah, it's great. Part two. Kids are grown, mom's on loose. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you do any tricks yourself or is it just like being this? No, they're pretty, they're huge illusions. I mean, they're really big um, oh, okay. illusions. I wouldn't want to know, I'll be in charge of any of that. I'm just kind of the, just the sidekick. Well, the sidekick is very important. Look at is Robin. It? What? Look at Robin in Batman. Oh, Robin, 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 sorry. Sidekicks are very important, <laughs> especially here at Comic-Con, I can <laughs> assure you. Okay, so I bet there's a lot of questions that you have out there. And here's a mic, and if you have any questions, just raise your hand, and you will be able to step down here and ask Pamela a question. Just anyone, raise your hands. Sir. Oh, you're a tall one. Let's see here if we can... Or maybe you can just grab it like that. Is it on? Hello, Pamela. Hello. I just want to say I'm such a big fan of Thank you, you and always been. And I wonder if you have any own experience of security work since you do such a good job on VIP. You mean am I a security guard? <laughs> yes. Have I been a security guard? Well, I've, well you know, I've, I've um, protected my kids in certain situations, <laughs> but that's about it. Nothing. Um, I think too, but I did learn a lot about weapons when I was on VIP and on barbed wire, so I, I, I'm pretty capable when it comes to um, martial arts, a little bit, kickboxing, self-defense, and uh, guns. But you wouldn't hurt anyone, right? Pardon me? You wouldn't hurt anyone. I wouldn't hurt anybody, <laughs> unless they messed with me. <laughs> yes, no, I wouldn't hurt anybody. <laughs> I have one more question, if that's okay, go ahead. Okay. Why do you think no one cares about all the animals in the world? I do think people care about all the animals in the world. I do think people have um, a definitely empathy and, and sympathy for, for animals, but I, I think that I started working with um, animal groups because it was the first thing I kind of thought of when I was getting so much attention on Baywatch. I thought, how can I share this attention with something more meaningful and bring awareness to some of the cruelty and animal experimentation and things that are unnecessary and um, even veganism, you know, and fashion and, cr you know, cruelty-free kind of everything. So um, that's where I started and then it kind of transferred on to all sorts of other things that I do with my foundation for human rights and children and, and um, and the environment, it's all connected. I just was, um, animals were my first, I had a real affinity with animals when I was young, so I felt like, and my dad was a hunter, so I got him to stop hunting, and that was my first action. Do you care about the otters? 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 Yes, I love otters. They're really fuzzy cute. chainsaws. <laughs> They're cute, but they don't go up to an otter. Why? Because they can, well, it depends what kind of otter. River otters, they call them fuzzy chainsaws. But if it's a <laughs> nice otter, for what? If it's a nice order. If it's a nice order, I mean, so you should never go up to an animal in the wild. You should just leave them alone. Thank you. And you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, any other questions we have? Please step up. Anyone? Raise your hands. Anyone? Well, I have a few more. Um, you were talking about uh, your kids. Uh, what? Your, your kids. My kids. Yeah, how many? Uh, kiss. They're old now. They're older, yes. My age? Younger. I don't know. How old are you? I look 43, but I'm only 27. 27. Well, Brad is 21 and Brad, Dylan's 19. Okay. Brad is the actor and Dylan's the musician. Oh, wow. Yes. So artistry runs in the family. Unfortunately, yes. I didn't <laughs> want them. We didn't want them to be, you know, but they're artists and they became, um, they, they chose that and they were very good academic students. They could have done whatever they wanted and they chose the arts and so they're old enough to decide what they want to do and I think they're going to be successful, and it's their lives. Yeah, it's a rough but my son won't let me listen to his music. He said I have to buy it on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. It's a tough industry. <laughs> it's a tough industry.
a tough industry, but they're in that world, and plus they're both, and they're both very talented, so we'll see. That's cool. Has he been in anything that we know, the, the actor? Uh, Bram has got a short film coming out, and he's done a TV show, but he's mostly um, modeling a lot, actually, lately. He's been a lot of the shows, walking around my shows, for fun. Except for his mom there as well. <laughs> no, I never did that. No, they don't like to be called models, though. They're actors and musicians. And then what kind of genre is it for the, the guy? Me? What kind of genre for the, uh, the music? Guy? Um, yeah. how, like um, techno kind of that kind oh, of vibe, so DJ like, oh. uh, production. I'm That's probably saying it wrong. He'd be so embarrassed. You're so stupid. What are you saying? We should set him up. Life. <laughs> we should set him up with um, with some of the. We have quite a big DJ uh, scene in, in uh, Sweden. Swedish House Mafia, Amici. I have to come here. I know, that's part of my an evil plan of mine is getting a place where he can create music here, but he wants to be in LA. Oh, yeah. It's a bit warmer. No, it's just, I, I, don't, I think it, he was in Paris and he was working with um, uh, uh, David Gale, <coughs> those people. So, I mean, he has people watching him already that are really great, so I'm hoping he comes to France and works from here more. That's really cool. I heard somewhere that your main focus when it comes to charity has been Wales. Is that true? I'm the international chair of the board of directors of the Sea Shepherd Conservation Society, so I'm very active with them. And Paul Watson is a really good friend of mine. And yeah, save the whales, save the oceans. If the oceans die, we die. So the biodiversity of the ocean is very important. And whales actually fertilize the plankton, and plankton is responsible for 50% of the air that we breathe. So people don't understand how important whales are, and they're becoming less and less, and it's very hard to calculate how many whales are left, because they're in the ocean, and we don't know, but they're definitely depleting. And I heard that they, they travel so far, don't they? They normally swim 100 miles a day, and so these, when you see whales in an aquarium, never go to a, if you, you never, I would say never go to an aquarium. Um, I, I, I go to Russia once a year and I speak at the Kremlin. A lot of uh, animals are, are they, cap, they capture whales in Vladivostok sometimes, and so I'm working really hard with them to try not to capture and sell whales to China. In America, they don't breed in captivity anymore, and that was a big win for PETA and for Sea Shepherd. Um, but the best thing you can do is not go to anything that has captive animals, zoos or um, aquariums. Mm. Uh, that's very good. Um... I heard about this teenager who uh, set out to save the ocean. He invented some sort of uh, machine that will gather all the plastic bags in the ocean. It's some sort of wave catcher thing oh, that they put in the middle of the Atlantic. Well, and there's, there's a plastic island. I mean, all this plastic goes into the to the ocean. Yeah. So we have to use less plastic, eat less meat, you know, the best we can. Everything we do, we need to only control what we yeah. do ourselves. Yeah. Okay. So. Just, all you can do is control yourself and your own habits. It's, it's um, a practice. Yeah. All right. Maybe you thought a little bit, and there we go. Welcome up, sir. <laughs> Hello, Pam. Hello. <laughs> I have two questions. And the first one is, what are your tips to young people that try to be actors or do something creative with their lives? Oh well, I mean it's hard, for, I always say I'm probably the worst person to ask about um, how to pursue acting or pursue the arts, but obviously art school, I, I have a lot of friends who are artists and, and photographers and they really work on their craft and, and, and um, actors and musicians and just to really work on your craft. That wasn't the way I went, but I never really didn't think too serious when it came to that, but I really appreciate it. But, um, to take acting lessons, to, to read and to and to take art lessons. That's the most that's the best way to go. Oh thank you. And uh, next question is how is it to work with David Hasselhoff? The Hoff. <laughs> the Hoff. <laughs> David is an interesting character. He loves being David Hasselhoff. <laughs> no, he's he's yeah. so funny. He's so funny. I have funny so many funny stories about him, but he's he's a really great guy. Really, really sweet and very funny and loves what he does and He's a big gambler, so he loses his phones in the ocean and things like that. There's always something funny going on with him. <laughs> Can you tell us a funny story with you two? Uh, well, just that he loves to go 8x10 CDs and pictures of himself to everybody. And he has his assistants climb mountains and give them to people up there. And no one even really knows. No one wants them. 
<laughs> and for Christmas we get CDs and you know calendars of him coming glistening out of the water. <laughs> um, and he just is, you know, he's just loves being him. He's a caricature of himself, but he's fun to watch and fun to be around. So he's definitely in the right business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. There we go. You just needed some thought time, I think. <laughs> intimidating to walk up to this. A little bit, maybe. Maybe we should move it, or maybe you can just walk around in the audience and sit next to people. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, my question is, when did you become a vegan, and what's your advice for us thinking about becoming vegans? Well, I've, I've been uh, variations of vegetarian since I came here. I remember when I came to, I'm, I'm Canadian, so I thought vegetarians eat fish. So and then, you, you know, some people, my mom would say, well, you're, okay, I want to cook lamb because you're a vegetarian, but I'll cook turkey. Like, just, just as you slowly eliminate animal products out of your diet, I always think it's a really good thing. I think it's, um, dairy is probably the first thing you should eliminate. It's the hardest thing on your body, but um, it doesn't seem to, it just, so you just do the best you can. And I think that it's, I, I always call myself, I'm a naughty vegan. I do the best I can. Like, it, it's just, instead of being such, you know, I think activism can be a real turn off too sometimes when you're really kind of dictating of how to be and what to wear and everything. You're just going to use your common sense. And it's, I, I, I became a champ because I, I cared about animals. And when I saw the slaughterhouse videos, I said, I don't want to eat animals. I don't want to eat anything with cruelty. Or I thought that the energy was cruel and the, you're eating this toxic kind of energy. Um, so I removed meat first and then turkey and then fish and then slowly. And now there's so many options, there's so many, so many things you can eat, there's so many fake meats even if you like that kind of texture, you can never, you're never going to go hungry being vegan. And you're doing something good for the planet, which I didn't think of at first, but that's, it's better than driving a hybrid car, you're doing much more for the environment if you eat less meat, and, um, and it's good for your health, so, and it's not cruel. I think that's going to be the future, I think way in the future we'll look back and go, oh my god, we eat animals? It's crazy. So, just bit by bit. Everything helps. Thank you. I have one more question. Yes, sir. And that's about Baywatch. What's your best memory when it comes to recording the Baywatch series? My best memory? Yeah, memory. God. So many. I mean, Baywatch was the most fun job I ever had because I could bring my dog to work. I would have been on the beach anyway, so that they paid me to be on the beach. I thought it was crazy. Um, I loved it. And the cast was really fun. The original cast, we didn't realize how popular the show was until we started traveling around the world. And, and realizing that the show was shown in 150 countries and everyone loved it, but we didn't know. We were just having a good time, like we would anywhere. So the whole, the entire, uh, all the seasons I did on Baywatch were great. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, very good. Uh, speaking of uh, the meat industry, there's a lot of good Netflix documentaries that I've watched just about the industry and what it does to the environment. So just a little tip. For all of you. Uh, all right, a lot of hands now. Uh, I think you were the first one, and then after it's your turn. Go ahead. Um, two questions. The first one is, how did you start acting? I haven't started yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I um, a home improvement. I actually don't know what that was. That I was also Playboy, and people contacted me to be on little TV shows, and then finally I went. It was, I never been, I've never been on an audition, so I would go to, I would never be able to find the audition. It was just bizarre, <laughs> string of events. But um, in Playboy, they wanted me to come to do Married with Children, then I would leave the lot, and someone would call me from a door and say, oh, you're here for the Hammer Time um, show. And I'd say, no, and he said, well, come in. Then I got that show, then I got this show. It's kind of like a very weird, kind of faded string of events. But, um, and then I, after they watch, I got my own show, VIP, and... You know, that's just kind of how it all, it was very uh, spontaneous. It wasn't something I pursued, yeah. but it was fun. It's fun when it happened. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh, the second question is, what is your favorite dish? Like food-wise, you know, like vegetarian dish or whatever. I, there's some great restaurants in, in, uh, in uh, LA. I love Crossroads. There's a lot of great things you can eat, like even like chicken parmesan, but it's not chicken, obviously. There's all sorts of good things, but I like to cook a lot. So if I'm cooking, then I, then I know it's going to be uh, vegan for sure and healthy. Yeah. Just easy stuff, pastas and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. All right. Next up. Glad to 
give me some recipes from when we were out traveling, vegan recipes, if you have some. Go ahead. Hello. I have a serious question and not so serious question, so I'll start with the light one. <laughs> so uh, I'm really happy you mentioned the Zubi Zoo song, because uh, my nickname in university was Zubi Zoo. And what's your personal connection with it? Because if, you name, if it inspired to name your dog, you must have some kind of a story with this song. I just love this song. No, I love this song and I love Zubi Zoo and his name is Zeus, Zeus. Whatever, and my kids want to call him Zeus, and I want to call him Bizubizu. Bizu. So I said, okay, now he's Bizu Bizu. But no, but I love this song. Yeah. What is your connection to it? Uh, my surname is Zubova, so they okay. started with the Zubi, and then they went to Zubi Zubi Zoo, and then How cute. Yeah. That's so cute. It was funny. <laughs> and the serious question is, uh, I've been uh, in contact with some uh, UN activists, and they've been kind of sharing about the problems they have about raising awareness and about charity and about activism. The thing is that, that they came to a conclusion that celebrity activism is kind of less and less efficient nowadays. Kind of people kind of care less and less. It used to be a very efficient, it used to be very kind of people would follow. And now it's like kind of going down and people are less empathetic, let's say, about it. Well I think I think it's if you have an authentic connection to the to the, the cause that you're associating yourself with, that's different, but I think sometimes people will associate themselves with a cause or a charity to gain attention for themselves. And that's kind of you know, boring, and, and there's only so many red carpets you can walk down for different events, and so it kind of gets diluted that way. Where you know, I, I feel like I've been an animal activist for a very long time, and spoke at parliaments, spoke at governments, and, and had laws changed. And I think it's um, it's a lot of work to be an activist. It's not just showing up at parties or, or showing up at fundraisers. So the person really has to be um, connected to that cause, and it's. And it's um, there are. I'm actually starting a foundation called Activist Tenure, and it's based on academic tenure. So we pick ten activists a year, and we um, we give them, you know, we pay them for their year salary. We pay them so they can look after their families and they can become career activists. And I think that's a good way to kind of really spread out activism because it could be people need to, we need more career activists. It's hard work, not just for celebrities, but for people that are just passionate about something. Awesome idea, thank you. Thank you. Yes. All right. I think I saw some more hands somewhere over there. Welcome. It's so dark, I can't see anybody. No, me either. Hello, hi. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me on this table. Okay. Hey, Pamela. Hi. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, fine, thanks. A question, this is Comic Con and this is like superheroes and such. Uh, if you could be a superhero. Oh dear. Yeah, here it comes. What would be your power and why? Oh boy. Why well, I'd make everybody not eat meat. <laughs> Cruelty free. That would be my um that would be a superhero. <coughs> what? The superhero name. Cruelty free woman, maybe. Yeah, something. I don't know. I don't a good know. name to have. I don't know, just I don't know, it's release all the animals. I have another question. Uh, do you ever get used to being a celebrity? Gosh, that's a funny question. I don't know, because you know when you're, when you're a mom, you're not a celebrity. I mean, your, your kids tell you every single day you're not special. <laughs> you learn. I mean, you're just... So, it's, I think having, just having children and, and you know, I, I had a, a big kind of fancy career on television, and then I had kids, and now my kids are grown, and they still think I'm just like everybody else, I, just, I embarrass them, I'm stupid, I'm this, I'm that, so it's just really, you just, I don't know, it's hard to say you're a celebrity, it's just part of my life that's kind of happened along the way, but you're, like I said, the kids always keep you grounded. Thank you. Thank you. That's good, I, we have one of the bigger celebrities, you know Slatan Ibrahimovic, the footballer? No. no. <laughs> One of the, the biggest uh, soccer stars in the world. Uh, his kids said the same thing. It's kind of interesting. They said, you know, no, he's just dad. That's that's it. I, and one, one time, my, my kids were the first time they went to surf camp, and I picked them up, and Brandon came up to me and said, "Are you Pamela Anderson?" And I said, "Yes." He said, "Why are all those people yet? Like, what is that? Is that something bad?" <laughs> because they were just little, and people were yelling and screaming and everything, and he just came up to me and said, "Are you Pamela Anderson? <laughs> what is this?" <laughs> So no, they don't think of you anything different. Yeah. Would you say that your uh, your sons has like been treated differently during than when they grew up because they had you as a mom? Well, they had a lot of fist fights over me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're very protective of mom. Yeah. And yeah, so over time and 
and at age appropriate, they, they learn things and you know, Playboy and all that stuff. Having a mom and Playboy is not an easy thing. And um, but when you do things like this, you don't think, oh, this is going to affect my children. Of course, but it does. It does. And so they, they, I felt like guilty about that. But they are strong kids, and they, you know, they're very open-minded. And we have a lot of artists around us, and so it's not like it's anything too, too um, traumatic. I hope they turned out okay. It seems like you raised them well. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. All right. Any other questions, Pamela? Oh, sorry, good one. Thank you. I'm just looking Very this way. Smoke, <laughs> sorry. It's smoky there too. It's like a rock bottom. Yeah. <laughs> smoky. Hi. Just wanted to ask you about your work against fur. Because I was a teenager in the 90s and I remember you did all these campaigns against fur. Uh, what made you start that? Like, what inspired you? Well, uh, Peter had a great campaign saying, I'd rather go naked than wear fur. Yeah. And I said, perfect, I'd rather go naked than wear anything. So I'll gladly do this <laughs> campaign. And fur, obviously, is very cruel and it's unnecessary. And I just actually did a, a fake, fake fur line in Russia, which I wore the coat today um, here. It's eco-fur, they call it in, in mm -hmm. Russia. And it's just as warm, waterproof. It's, it's, it's not necessary to... What is it made of? Animals. It's, I don't know what kind of what the fabric is, but it's not... Um, Obviously, it's not animal, but it's okay. it's not wool, no animal, but it's very, very warm and and um, beautiful and it's glamorous. Mm -hmm. It's more glamorous to be cruelty free. That's yes. what I say. Well, my other question is actually a uh, sort of suggestion. Can I give you a gift? Okay. How oh, sweet! Sure. Thank you. I love gifts. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you so much. Recently, we had this Irma uh, uh, hurricane in uh, US. Uh, hurricane Irma. Irma. Uh, do you have any uh, any help uh, or anything that you are doing from your side uh, for help the victims? Hurricane Irma. If you're doing. Well, I'm working with PETA, and PETA's rescuing the animals. I mean, there's a lot of great groups working in, in Irma right now. There's a lot of um, uh, programs that I I support with my foundation, but PETA is doing a lot of really great work. Uh, getting some of the animals and reuniting people with their pets, mm. okay. mostly. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks for that. Thanks. Thank you. I think it's amazing when you see these photos on, on Facebook and Instagram of people, you know, carrying their dogs on their backs and they have like water up here and just that, you know, it means a lot. Uh, 
It's a lot. That's a good time to talk about climate change when these things are happening. Exactly. Usually it's happening to, to third world countries and, and if it's not happening to us or where we feel we don't feel like we need to make any changes. For sure. So. We also have the hurricane down in the Caribbean at the same time. It's some, uh, it feels like, well, here in Sweden we've been recycling for 25 years. I know, so it's so doing our part. <laughs> I just made 25 years and it's probably something. It's good though. All right. You're the leader. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, up there. I see you. Come on down. Well, now you work with PETA and you have a lot of charities, but before, when you started your career or were on Baywatch before, like, have you ever had any like um, difficulties in your acting career because of your vegan opinions or...? Yeah, you know, I, I, mean, I do think so, but people don't... I, I guess when you're, when you're, you're they know that you're going to cause a little bit of trouble, and I, I used to have people tell me, don't talk about this when you're talking about the show, don't talk about this when you're promoting it, but I never listened. And I, I always made sure that I, I spoke about things that I really cared about instead of my boyfriends or my boobs or something silly. So I just um, always kind of worked it into whatever I was doing in whatever country that was. But I also, you know, I have a lot of associations now, like especially with Julian Assange. And yeah, definitely people have their opinions. I was just in LA and people, you know, they wanted to blame him for everything, for Trump being in office. And, and Hillary's downfall, but you know she was responsible for her own downfall. He just revealed true documents, and actually, yeah, he was had some issues in Sweden too. Thank God that's over because that was baloney, <laughs> not vegan, but it was <laughs> it was um that was that's that. so anyway. I, yeah, people do have their, but I I rather live like this, and I'd rather be able to speak my mind since I do have a voice, and some don't have a voice, so it's worth it for me to not. Do everything, like, especially with commercials. I can't do a commercial for L'Oreal, for instance, because they test on animals. Or I don't do a Burger King commercial because yeah, I can't do a Burger King commercial. I'm vegan, and so there's, of course, it's really narrowed my my uh, my world. But I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Oh. Is it okay if I ask another question? Of course. Uh, continuing on the vegan topic, uh, when you uh, gave birth to your children, like your sons, did you? Feed them vegan food right away, or did you make them make no, them? No, no. My kids, my kids were not vegan. Um, at that point, when I had children, I was vegetarian, and I was slowly becoming vegan over my lifetime. And they, they, and their husband, my husband was not vegan. So I've cooked for them and cooked meat for them and let them make their own choices. And now Brandon is is vegan. Brandon and his girlfriend are, but because they watch this. Documentary, not because oh, really? of me. No one listens to me. <laughs> well, then mom but says it. Like if you, you really push people, then they're not going. You know, they need to make their own choice. So I always made it available. Of course, they eat more vegetables than most of the kids, and um, I prepared things for them that they that they loved. And and their father, like I said, when they were with their dad, they ate whatever. And they slowly, just over time, made their own choice. And now Brandon and his girlfriend are vegan. But because of this, what is this documentary? I'm just. I'm oh, it's reading. called something. Like what's like the what the health? Health? What the health or something like healthy, that? Healthy, exactly. Something about the health. Yeah. What the hell? What the hell? But, but yeah, when they said this, and I said, so, oh, so now you're gonna be vegan. You're not gonna listen to me. <laughs> but they have tried over there over time. I've tried Thank to bribe them. I've tried everything. Thank you so much. It's Thank a you. Great inspiration to hear you talk about these things. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, fun fact, actually, about the uh, well, young generation and Hillary Clinton. Uh, surprisingly, I don't do this all the time. I also have a normal job uh, where I work a lot with uh, media and analysis of the younger generation, millennials. And if millennials were to vote in the election of uh, well, last year, uh, Hillary would have won with like a landslide. So she did the... get more votes than Trump, but it's the way it's split up. Yeah. I think if Bernie would have won, I think Bernie would have won. Yeah, Trump. probably. Yeah. But, yeah. But of, of the two, then Hillary would have won with a lot. So we have a bright future ahead of us, I think. It has to get brighter. <laughs> we'll all help out, I think. <laughs> uh, any other questions for Pamela? No one? <laughs> Mario! Ah, <laughs> cute! Can you please speak 
speaking in an Italian accent as well. <laughs> I was wondering, I have two questions, well, one is a follow-up. Um, for your free time, do you watch any movies or read books, stuff like that? I read, I read constantly, I drive me crazy. But no, I'm always reading, and um, I like old films, I like French films, and like, my kids are always teasing me about um, watching movies with subtitles and things like this, but I'm not a big... Um, action movie person. That's why I haven't seen Baywatch yet, so I haven't seen it. It's not really the kind of movie I would want to see. <laughs> but yeah, that's about it. Alright, do you have a favorite book and movie? Pardon me? Do you have a, any uh, favorite book or movie? I read a lot of Anis Nin and uh, Frida Kahlo and I love, I love poetry and um, that's the book I have right now. And I'm also reading, right now I'm learning French. I'm speaking French and then I'm living in France and so I'm reading Napoleon and Josephine. I'm a real romantic, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, that's how I'm learning French. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you seen, I think it's called, is it Expendables? It's about a French movie with the guy in the wheelchair and the, the, the black guy. Oh, yes. One of my favorite movies. What is it called? Do you, you guys know? Untouchable. Untouchable. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it when they're doing the facial hair of it. <laughs> it's uh, so fun. Uh, okay, any other quick questions? Marius was very good. Great Mario outfit, by the way. No worries. Anyone else? Oh, there you go. Too close. Hello, Pamela. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering, um, are you a feminist? That's a good question. I, I, um, I don't like to label myself as anything. I don't really, I always say I'm a, I'm a woman I want to be. I don't like a woman telling me how to be a woman or a man telling me how to be a woman. And I think that we kind of get caught into these labels of, but you're either judged by people if, if you're, you know, you're, you're masculine or you want to work or you're judged by a woman if you're not doing it this way. So I just feel like we just have to be whoever we want to be. So I wouldn't call myself a feminist even though uh, of course, everyones they've made such big strides and it helped women all over the world. There's great parts about it. And I also think that feminism in Sweden is even, is really, really, really yeah, like, strict, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like Victorian kind of, it's, um, it's very, very, and I think, it, I think that um, it's a lot of good to it, but I also think there's, there's good, bad and good to it all, bad and good sides. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think we maybe, are we summing this up maybe? <laughs> Anyone else? Last question, Pamela? Yes. Well, that's my giveaway now. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. Biggest setback or biggest mistake during your acting career? Oh my gosh, so many, <laughs> so many, <laughs> so many. Well, there's a lot of things I could have done, I guess, and I, I didn't because I had, you know, my I had my babies, which obviously that was more important. But anything to do with choices, uh, career moves. But you know, I got married and had a wild and crazy husband who I took up all of my my um, brain power. <laughs> But yeah, things happened during that marriage, I think, that were, that were difficult, and that kind of were a little bit of a setback, but, you know, we really can't have any regrets. And I've had a great life, and I'm really, I've had a fun, wild, sexy life, from Playboy to, you know, Barbed Wire to Baywatch. But I feel kind of I'm back into the Baywatch mode now, like now I'm gonna maybe do this magic show. Everything kind of feels a little more wholesome. I've kind of had my rock star days. I'm done with that, <laughs> maybe. And we'll see what happens next. But it's, it's a different time. It's feel like chapter two. Chapter one was wild and crazy. Chapter two seems a little more, um, a little more um, subdued. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Will we see you in any Las Vegas shows? Everyone wants me to do a Vegas show. I was asked to do. I was asked to play Roxy in Chicago on Broadway too, and I couldn't do it. I didn't do it because my, I didn't want to move my kids to New York. 
you know, I've been asked to do a burlesque show in China. I didn't want to move to China with my kids. So now that my kids are grown, I'm kind of open to new experiences and working. And, and so we'll see what happens next. And they both moved, moved out, both of your sons? Oh, my kids are both financially independent. They're both, they would never take a dime from me. They would never. They, would, they, they spoil me rotten. They, they make their own money. They're very, very, um, they're good kids. It's unbelievable. I don't know how it happened. Tommy and I both go, I don't know. <laughs> What happened? That's amazing. But they're fun and wild and crazy and got that spirit. But they're, um, they're gentlemen, which is the proud thing. I'm very proud of that. They live still in uh, Los Angeles as well? They live in LA. Yeah. I always kid with my mom and say, well, I'm going to move to Australia. And she's like, no, no. I, mean, I moved to France. She's like, mom, you just left us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you can come to France. I live there. I live there. Yeah, Milan. my son's going to be in Milan next week. I'm going to see him here. I see him more. I see them more here. If I'm home cooking dinner, no one shows up. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm going to France. Finally. That's cool. Do you it's speak any, Do you speak any other languages? I'm learning French. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. Canadian, so I, I mean, I learned French in school. So now I just have to speak it, which is sometimes intimidating. I'm learning. I studied French for four years or five years, and I lived in France for six months. I still can't speak language. It's because everyone speaks English to you. This is the problem with me. I said, just don't speak English to no. me. I have to learn. That's true. But in France, it's at least easier, I guess. It's not as many speaking English in France. So maybe you can practice a little bit more there. Hopefully, at least. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being here, Pamela. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.